Hello, friends, and happy Saturday. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Real quick before I get started today, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this channel is aimed for a thousand subs as quickly as possible, and as such, I'd greatly appreciate your subscription, regardless of how often you watch my content. So if you would be so kind, please subscribe down below, uh, hit the like button, and don't forget to share this with a friend who might enjoy it. Your support, as always, is appreciated. Alright, all that shit out of the way, let's get down to business. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into how to play The Nun. The Nun was released October 3rd, 2021, and last updated October 16th of 2021. The canon name for The Nun is Martha. Uh, the credits, real quick, uh, Apple Aerosol did the design, art, dialogue, and concept. Aiden did the animations and the concept, and Mafe did the coding, balancing, and sound. So, real quick, let's go through the base stats. Uh, the HP is going to start out at 24 at first resolve and progress to a 44 at fifth resolve. Uh, this is what I consider to be average HP. Um, it's the same HP tracking as the Vestal, all the way up. So she's not super tanky in the HP stat specifically, um, but also she's not really lacking. So Dodge is going to be a 5 at opening resolve and progress to a 25 at max resolve. This is also an average stat. Uh, shares the same uh, tracking as the Bounty Hunter or the Man at Arms here. Protestant 0. Speed is going to start out at a 3. Progress to a 4 at 3rd resolve and then a 5 at max level. Um, this is what I consider to be average speed as well. So you'll notice that this whole side of her stats here is average. Accuracy mod is a zero as you'd expect. The crit is going to be a 1% at opening level and progress to a 5% at max level. This is what I consider to be low crit, but that's a little misleading and we'll kind of get to that uh, when we start talking about her skills. And finally, the damage is a 6 to 10 at opening level and it will become an 11 to 15 at max level. Um, this is a custom damage track, uh, but I would consider it, if, if you're just all things considered, uh, appraising how good it is, it's about an average frontline damage. Um, although, if you're just looking at it strictly as max damage, it's going to be comparable to Highwayman. But if you're talking about minimum damage, it's more like Abomination, so there's a little more reliability and getting that damage out, she's going to guarantee do one or two more HP damage on a low roll. So let's just waste no more time and go straight into her combat skills. First of which is Righteous Fury. This is usable from rank 1 or 2 and can target rank 1 or 2 enemies. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 85, a crit mod of plus 5%, and does full damage. Uh, she is going to buff herself when she uses this. She's going to receive plus 3 crit and a plus 10% move chance. Uh, these buffs will scale with her level. Uh, the max level one I have here is a plus 7 crit and a plus 30% move chance. Um, those are pretty considerable, um, and that is going to buff up her crit chance as uh, her one weakness as far as attacking goes. So this is a good combo move if you're hoping to fish for crits. Second skill is Holy Garot, usable from rank 1 or 2, and this can target rank 2, 3, or 4 enemies. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 60%, and a crit mod of negative 5%. This is going to pull one rank and stun the enemy. The pull is going to be an 80% base, while the stun is a 100% base. So this is good for... Um, Stunning, disorienting the enemy, and also uh, shuffling the enemies a bit. Uh, so this is a good kind of uh, support move, uh, if that is what you're hoping to get out of the nun. The 
third combat skill is Flame's Reach. This is usable from any rank, and will hit every rank of enemy. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 75%, and a crit mod of negative 9%. This is going to inflict bleed on every enemy for 110% base, which is pretty potent. Uh, it's one point a round every three rounds, uh, so it's not the uh, most meaningful bleed in the world, but you're going to benefit from being bleeding in the first place. Uh, it's going to have a 0% stun normally, um, but if this is a large type enemy, that is actually going to be a 110% stun at this level. Uh, so it's actually a potent stun on big enemies. And during the duration of the time they are bleeding from this attack, uh, there will be a stumble effect from the enemies. So you're going to get some uh, shuffling going on based on that. This is also going to come with a one turn cooldown. A devastating blow. Fourth combat skill Baptism of Fire. Is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and can target any allied rank. Uh, you target an ally, and you're going to move them forward one rank. And you're going to buff that target, plus 5 accuracy, plus 5% crit, and 15% damage. In exchange, they will be debuffed for plus 15% stress. Uh, these are great offensive buffs to be giving your ally. Overall, this is a fun move. Uh, if if Buffing an ally's damage output is your consideration. And the fifth combat skill is Banish. Banish is usable once per battle from rank 1 or 2 and can target rank 1 or 2 enemies. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 85. A damage mod of negative 50%, and a crit mod of plus 1%. This is going to inflict knockback on the enemy at an 80% base for one rank. This is also going to deal 50% more damage for every 20% of HP that the target is missing. So you're going to get uh, something that looks about twice as powerful if they are, you know, at half HP or so. So this is actually going to be a pretty potent attack for taking out enemies. And as such, when it does get a kill, you are going to recover 10% of the nun's HP and clear enemy corpses. So that's actually going to be uh, really, really good. Uh, you can see why this is only useful once for battle. Uh, it's a very good uh, tactical add-in to your group of skills. It's going to help you in a couple different ways, and it's going to give some self-sustain to the nun. The bigger the beast, the greater the glory. Uh, the sixth ability is Indecent Maneuvering, usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and it will target both rank 1 and 2 enemies on the opposing side. This has an accuracy base of 80, a damage mod of negative 60%, and a crit modifier of plus 1%. It's going to have a normal stun percentage of 15% base, which seems low, but per rank you are traveling through the use of this skill, you're going to afflict an extra plus 20% to your stun chance. Uh, this will move you forward three ranks, so it can move you all the way to rank 1 from any rank you are in that isn't rank 1. Uh, so if you want to use this, you're going to want to have her uh, start off in rank 4, maybe you start with a flame's reach, and then you indecent maneuvering your way to the front, or maybe you just go right for it. Um, but that plus 20% stun chance per rank traveled actually make the, makes this potent enough to be relevant. It's not a guaranteed stun on either target, but the fact that you're potentially stunning two is going to help you immensely. A decisive pummeling. And the final combat skill is Penance. It's usable from rank 1, 2, or 3. This is going to activate Repost. Now the accuracy of this Repost is going to scale with level. It's a little inaccurate at first, um, but it gets way better as you level up. And this Repost is going to get stronger on every hit that it lands. 
uh, and that also scales with the level. This is also going to mark yourself as a target and add 33% to the damage you receive as the nun. At top level, it, it, it looks a little different. You're going to receive less uh, additional damage as it grows up a level. Um, but but you are going to get a higher accuracy and uh, strength scaling out of that repost as you get higher. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. All right. Looking at the camping skills real quick here, you're going to notice it has the uh, Encourage, Wound Care, and Pep Talk, as you'd expect. The first unique camping skill is Count Prayers. It's time cost 3, and the party is going to receive plus 10% healing for the next 4 battles, and if religious, there will be an additional 15% healing received for the next 4 battles. Uh, so in a religious party, you're actually going to get a lot out of this. Um, it's not going to directly heal you right there in the camp, but it is going to give you vastly higher healing received for everyone. This even works if you've got a regeneration healer on your on your team. So if you've got a good regen healer, restoration kind of move, uh, this is also going to help that because it is healing received, not healing skills. The second unique camping skill is flex. It's time cost two. You are going to de-stress for 10, and one companion is going to de-stress for 10, but if they're afflicted, they're actually going to de-stress for negative 25. Um, you know, this is kind of brings some levity to the campsite. She's going to uh, show off for some other people in the uh, in the party right there around the campfire. It's uh, kind, of, kind of fun. Third unique camping skill is push-ups. It's time cost 4. And you're going to give yourself some buffs, uh, plus 20% damage with melee skills, and plus 10% crit with melee skills. Uh, it's a good way to make sure she's in uh, top top form when she's in the combats coming up. Um, so it's good to uh, kind of get get this out of the way right before a boss fight, or um, if you are making your run at the Shambler, etc. And the last of her unique camping skills is clean rosary. Time cost two. You are going to get a plus 20% stun chance with ranged skills for the next four battles, and Flames Reach specifically is going to have a plus 20% to bleed chance for the next four battles. So this is good for her utility skills. Um, it's pretty good for Garot because that is a ranged skill. It's pretty good for Flames Reach uh, in both ways because you're also going to get that additional. Um, if it's a size 2 target stun bonus as well. It's good for her support moves. Uh, it, it does not, however, stack with um, indecent maneuvering, as that is not a ranged stun attack. Let's see. Real quickly, uh, her crit effect is going to debuff the enemy party for a number of rounds, lowering the, the damage that they deal uh, for the entire enemy party. So it's a pretty good uh, crit effect, especially if her debuff chance is a little bit buffed. Uh, it won't fail as much. Um, some other considerations with her uh, party composition-wise. Um, as a kind of damage support tank-style unit, uh, she works best with a dedicated healer and just a few other damage or support allies. And depending on her moveset, you're going to get... Uh, a little more out of that support side of her kit or the damage side of her kit uh, based on your party comp. Uh, quirks. Um, I would definitely prioritize a couple of her stats. Um, you'll notice is that a lot of her accuracy is a little bit lacking, like uh, 5, maybe 10 lower than what you really, really want out of that. So if you're not going to buff her accuracy through trinkets, you may want to buff it through quirks. Uh, otherwise, what I would actually prioritize would be damage, uh, dodge, and crit, especially if you were using Righteous Fury. So keep your eyes peeled for quirks like Warrior of Light, uh, Precise Striker, Luminous, 
uh, lurker if you don't like going out in uh, torchlight comps, etc. All right, so let's go over our trinkets real quick. I don't have all of them. I do have most of them uh, aside from her uh, crimson cord trinket, I think. Both of them, rather. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is the bloodied brass knuckles. So while you're wearing these, if you hit an enemy, you're going to gain a buff of 2% damage and a buff of 1% crit while debuffing yourself plus 2% stress received. Uh, these buffs are going to last, I don't know if it's until camp or the entirety of the quest. Uh, these are long-lasting buffs that are going to uh, stack really well. You know, that crit that crit buff is actually going to be really, really relevant by the end of the quest. Um, and the buff to damage is also going to be pretty good. You do need to worry about that debuff self, plus 2% stress received. Um, if she's targeted by a lot of stress attacks... This could be a problem, um, but if you have a good stress healer in your party, uh, not too much to worry about. Second one we're going to go over is the Iron Veil. This is going to add 25% to our max HP, but in exchange you're going to lose 15 of her dodge stat. On an attack, you are going to mark yourself as a target, and if you were hit, you were going to have 10% damage reflection. So this is not bad if um, you want to go with a damage reflection uh, kind of build. It can make a difference in getting KOs on weakened enemies. Um, it's especially good if you're also using uh, dots in your party comp. So if they're already super super weakened by uh, bleeds and or blights, this is a not a bad way to finish people off. Uh, the next one is Silver Cross. It's going to add 50% to your repost duration, and each time you repost, you're going to add one to the round of buffs that you've got going on. In exchange, you're going to lose 10 dodge when you add this trinket. Uh, it's not a bad with her uh, repost skill penance, uh, but overall, that, that minus 10 dodge scares me. I have yet to use this, but it looks like it could be an interesting way to play. Uh, the first of her common trinkets is the Annotated Verse Book. This is going to give her plus 25% damage versus Unholy. And the other common trinket she has here is the Black Iron Cross, which is going to give her a very familiar 25% damage versus Humans. Um, let's see, real quick, she has this common trinket as well. Uh, cosmic Blessing. When you use Baptism of Fire, it's going to enable healing through that move now. And Baptism of Fire is going to have a plus 33% to its buff duration, so you're going to get a whole nother turn out of its buff duration. Uh, in exchange, you are debuffing the nun minus 40% to her damage dealt, and minus 10% to her crit. Uh, and every time this hero is hit, you're going to buff yourself. Baptism of Fire is going to do one more healing than it otherwise would. So this is not a bad way to, uh, if, if you were using her as kind of a uh, support class, uh, it's also good as if you were using her as a tank class, uh, because the more she's hit, the more powerful that heal is going to be on Baptism of Fire. So I'm going to run out with that uh, here in a second. But uh, you kind of want to make up for that minus 40% to her damage. Because it's going to bring her from, like, what I consider average frontline damage to more of a backline attacker. Even though, as you'll see here, 9 to 12 is actually a little more potent than you'd expect at this level for a backliner. Uh, but it is a little bit to uh, be concerning yourself with. If you want to use that and you still want damage to be a factor... Uh, some, th some other damage trinket is probably going to help you a ton. So, I think I've pretty much got everything I want. I've got a party here that should be fine. Uh, 
This party should still work if I want to move her around to show off her other moves. Uh, it's just not yeah, optimized for that. But we're going to see uh, what we can do. To prosecute our war against the swine, we must first scout their squalid homes. All right. Well, looks like I can go this way to get combat. Why not? Check out the stack of books. Put up your dudes. Put up your dudes. All right. Well, I am going to get a double stun. I guess I'm gonna visceral. Turn order could be a little bit better. We'll see what's up. Um, let's do that. Turn one. I think I'd like to start with flames reach. Um, it's a good way to set some bleed on folks. It's good because she's got a nice whip, like a rosary whip. So I gotta do this. I think I got some moves I can use from rank three. The slow death. If not, I just wait to do finale. Unforgiving. Uh, flex shot. I don't really need this. Stall for a turn. Get another use out of the nun. I do. I have baptism of fire. So let's see how uh, long that buff's gonna last with a trinket on. Really, all that special going on there. Give them no quarter. Okie dokie. Uh, we don't really need the treasure. We're just here for combats. And obviously, being bitten by traps. Very important that that happens with frequency. Alright. Traps are important. Alright. Going this way. We're taking the least optimal route through this dungeon, but it's where the combats are, so can't complain. I didn't change her moves, but it should be okay. Get a stun on you. So, um, Polygarot actually will reach the front guy, so it's not a bad deal. Uh, I am going to use Flame's Reach, though. It's going to have a chance to stun our big boy. Singular strike. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to activate the post so that he's ready for next round. Just bleed. For death, I choose. That's what I thought. That was a shit ton of damage. Did he avoid rot? I don't see that that's a thing. That was a shit ton of damage. Their cursed champion falls. Well, my party might be a little bit too offensive. Let's uh, remove that. Um, he's probably fine how he is. Actually, now let's, let's do that real quick. Alright, we did not use Holy Garage yet for that punch. So I'm gonna actually go with this. I'm gonna get myself in the last rank. Let's see if I can get good stun out of indecent maneuvering. Yeah. 
you'll disarm that. It's fine. Alright. Final combat. Alright. We're gonna do this. Uh, oh, I got both of them this time. What do you get now? Well, I'm going to... Just... Just KO you, I guess. Alright. Hindus and maneuvering. Let's do this shit. Did not get a stun, but these guys are kind of resistant, so that's probably why. Yay, we're post. Let's get you. No? Okay. Well, I'm gonna power up my Banish. No, I actually can get a kill on one of these guys. Uh, Banish, get a kill on you. Destroyed. Got the debuff. Masterfully for all kinds executed. of crit stuff. Let's see. Anybody actually need a stress heal? Why not? Is the weapon I'm gonna let the nun finish own. this guy off. And alrighty. Get rid of the bleed. Righteous Fury. Let's go! Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. And that will give her her crit and move chance buff for three rounds, as you expect. So, little pointer that I forgot about, uh, that we just found out. Oh, that's not the one. There we go. Is these, uh, these buffs you're getting from Baptism of Fire last one turn. So, uh, adding to the buff duration by 33%, doesn't actually give you a new round by itself. Uh, so you're gonna need something else that's gonna add to buff duration uh, for that to actually help you. Otherwise, um, I think that's it. Nice. So, you should definitely check out the Nun. She's a lot of fun. Uh, she's a great class if you want uh, offensive-minded uh, tank units or a support class to add to your Hamlet today. So give it a shot. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're going to go back to normal Darkest Dungeon 1 uh, Let's Play videos next week. Uh, we are going to be, hopefully, experimenting with trying to get more DD2 videos out. Uh, I just don't know what my schedule looks like for that. Um, and until I get my computer to play it with a lot of um, actual game speed retention, uh, we're going to not be recording those videos. It's not as engaging uh, as a super slow kind of gameplay speed thing. If I'm not recording it, it maintains a almost good speed. So we're going to look into that. Um, otherwise, we've got another guide video coming up next Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.